Welcome back in, everybody. Hope you're doing well. We are just after week five of the NFL season for the Kansas City Chiefs. They're two and three, and I know that kind of sucks, but hey, I hope you're doing well in spite of that, in spite of all the emotion tied to that. We're going to talk. There's so much to talk about. we got to talk about the offense, the defense, the money, the overall big picture. We're not going to do it all in one video. I kind of sort of have plans to do three videos today, get them out tonight this evening and there's just so much to cover wasn't able to be with you guys last week after the philadelphia win a good win for kansas city back then and uh, certainly something that's helping them on the schedule right now but uh, coming off the buffalo game two and three for kansas city we're going to talk about the offense today we're going to start with the offensive line and kind of work our way out from there okay so if you guys have been watching the videos at all this year with me you know that lucas niang and orlando brown are struggling not so much in run blocking, but especially in pass blocking. They are really, really struggling. And that's what we're going to start out with today. Orlando Brown, Lucas Niang against the elite edge rushers. That's against the Joey Boses and the Miles Garretts. Against those elite cream of the crop edge rushers, they have no chance. They have absolutely had no chance. They've, they've not even been competing in those battles. They've just been getting wore out. In, in, in almost every single one of those scenarios against the elite edge rushers. And, and I, I don't see anything that makes me think that's going to change. And that's what's got me concerned. Now, I don't know what you guys are hearing in Kansas City, but nationwide, really, nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about the, the tackles struggling in pass coverage and how that's going to affect Kansas City offense for the rest of the season, especially when and if you get to the playoffs. It, it's going to be a massive problem. And really nobody's talking about that. Everybody's talking about the defense, and, and I understand because the defense is a mess right now too. But this is a problem. If, if Kansas City cannot pass block, then they're not going to be able to score as many points. And, and that's, that's really key because even if your defense is a mess, and Kansas City's defense is a mess right now, even if Kansas City's defense is a mess, if you can pass block and give Mahomes a clean pocket, you don't have to have a top 10 offensive line. Just get it back up to, to mid-level to average. If you can do that, you can start to win some of these shootouts instead of getting beat like you did by Buffalo on Sunday night, okay? And, and that's, that's the issue here. That's what is so important right now as we talk about this. Brown and Yang have no chance against those elite edge rushers. They're, they're barely slowing the guys down when it comes to guys like Bosa and Garrett. When you move over to the quality edge rushers, we're just talking about average starters here who may be good athletes but not necessarily – dialed in to get into the quarterbacks like the Eagles had and the Ravens and and uh, and, and the Bills. We're, we're talking not cream of the crop guys, but just quality edge rushers who, who have some success to get into the quarterback. Brown and Yang are even struggling to block those guys, okay? And the Chiefs are constantly having to do, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff here in a second. The Chiefs are constantly having to do a lot of things to help out Brown and Yang in pass coverage, even against just the average quality edge rushers. Forget the cream of the crop, guys. They're struggling even there. And they're struggling so badly that they're not even up to average pass blocking, average NFL pass blocking against average NFL starters. That's how bad it is right now. But the Chiefs' offensive coaching staff, Andy Reid, Eric Benemy, they've done a fantastic job at disguising that so much so yeah, nobody's really talking about it. Everybody's talking about how bad the defense is. Now, that's very different, and, and I want to make this point before we move on. That's very different from how the Chiefs have had to play the past three or four seasons, however long they had Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Fisher at right tackle and left tackle. Mitchell Schwartz basically could handle any edge rusher in the NFL, and that's not to say he wouldn't occasionally let a guy through when he's playing a top edge rusher, but by and large, Schwartz was winning those battles against any edge rusher in the league that you put in front of him. Schwartz was winning those battles. And Schwartz wasn't necessarily uh, the all-pro Hall of Fame kind of a, a right tackle, but Schwartz was winning those battles. You didn't have to give him any help at all. I, I mean, almost never. And the same thing for Eric Fisher to a lesser degree. Eric Fisher, no matter who, was he, who, who he was lining up against, was competitive and was winning his fair share of battles. And, and it was only against the elite quick twitch edge rushers that you were having to roll a lot of blocking help over to Eric Fisher. Now, now Fisher wasn't winning as many of those battles as, as Schwartz was, but generally speaking, 
you could count on not having to roll blockers out to the tackle spots. And you could save the, 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 uh, the tight end blocking or the, the running back blocking for the interior three uh, guards and center. And, and you could focus on that and give Mahomes a generally clean pocket. And that's just not the case this year. Most of the time, when Mahomes drops back deep to pass, and we're talking a seven-step drop, right? When, when, it, when he's dropping back that deep, more than likely, he's under heavy pressure and he's having to roll out. He, he's not able to stay on that spot and be comfortable and survey the field. He's just not getting the time to do that when he drops back. And that's doing a lot of limitations on the Chiefs' offense, and it's making the Chiefs, we'll talk about it in a second, making the Chiefs' um, offensive coaches have to do a ton of, to try to disguise that and hide that. And, and in general, uh, the media hasn't picked up on that, but NFL defensive coordinators have picked up on it. They picked up on it Sunday night uh, when Buffalo came into Kansas City and did a lot of damage, okay? So that's where we're starting at here, okay? That's, that's the starting point that I gotta make. Brown and the gang, they're not struggling in run blocking but they are, they are getting devastated and wore out when it comes to pass blocking. They just have no chance against the elite guys, and they are struggling even against average edge rushers right now in pass blocking. Okay, Now, what that's done, that has forced a rather brilliant uh, a coaching staff on the offensive side of the football, Andy Reid, Eric Benjamin, and the assistants, that has forced them to come up with a ton of stuff to make up for that, and, and and they have they have pulled they have pulled all the stops out. I mean, they have been wildly creative here. We're going to go through eight things. There's probably more that I'm just not smart enough to pick up on, but they have done a fantastic job here through five games. I, I mentioned that core a few weeks ago of Mahomes, Kelsey, Hill, uh, uh, Reed, the enemy. Uh, of those five guys, have just done a fantastic job of making up for the weaknesses that you have right here with Brown and Yang in the pass blocking spots, okay? So uh, first of all, the first thing they've done is just the shorter drops. Instead of instead of, Mah of Mahomes dropping back here to say the seven, the, the seven step drop level, Mahomes typically is going back to three steps or five steps, okay? And, and that's a huge difference. Mahomes is not getting to drop back as deep in the pocket. It doesn't give his receivers as much time to work their way down the field to do double moves. But that's something that the, that the Chiefs have done because they know Mahomes is not going to get the time here from these tackles. He's not going to get the time. They have very smartly shortened his, his drops, and, and that just allows him to get rid of the football quicker. Now it limits the offense. There's no question about it. But the Chiefs had to do it because they're not going to get the time to do full seven-step drops consistently. And Mahomes is not going to get to stay at that spot right there. He's just not. And the Chiefs know that. And they haven't been saying that because you don't, you don't want to tell the world that your tackles are struggling and you don't want to let the uh, opposing defensive coordinators know that. But opposing defensive coordinators are, are not dumb. They are figuring this out. And we saw it Sunday night against the Bills. They are figuring this out that the Chiefs, do not have the amount of time to drop back as deep because those tackles are struggling and they're doing shorter drops, which limits the Kansas City offense as they try to work downfield, especially with Hill and Kelsey. The second thing that Kansas City is doing, of course, and you've seen this you know, the whole season, and that they're rolling Mahomes out, usually to his right, correct? They're usually rolling him out, and what that does, that basically... They don't have to worry about this side. Whatever edge rusher is coming right here, they don't have to worry about that at all. They don't have to block him if they don't want to. And if they want to shift the numbers, the blocking numbers right here, and help out Lucas Niang on that side, and this is a very smart thing to do. If they want to do that, they have been rolling Mahomes out. Now, what that also does, generally speaking, again, this limits the offense. Mahomes is now throwing on the run, and... He doesn't have as much opportunity to throw back to this side of the football field. So Kansas City basically is working with two-thirds of the football field instead of the full three-thirds because Mahomes is operating over here. Now, if, if anybody in the league has a strong enough arm to get the ball all the way back over here to this side of the football field, Mahomes does. But generally speaking, that's not smart to try to throw on the run over here all the way back to that corner. You're just asking for trouble, even if you have a cannon of an arm like Patrick Mahomes does. So... They are rolling him out a lot just in an effort 
to help out Miang and Brown, and they're doing it a, a lot. The third thing that they're doing, a ton of chip blocking here from the tight end and the fullback. So uh, whoever the running back is, and it really doesn't matter for our purposes today, but they are doing a ton of chip blocking, and you'll see this almost throughout every game so far. Whichever player they're most concerned about on that play, they're having the running back come and just chip and chip right here. Uh, the same thing over on this side, chip, 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 before he goes up for pass or sometimes before he starts working his way back in for, for coverage on the inside. A lot of chip blocking from the running backs. But, and, and this is the big thing, you're also getting a lot of chip blocking from this guy, Mr. Travis Kelsey, okay? And what that means is, when, when Travis Kelsey, and you'll see this a lot, we're going to cover this again here in just a second when we get to, uh, to Kelsey tight and the tight end set. But what this means is, you're taking one of your receivers, your, your running back or your tight end, either one, and instead of them being out here in, 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 uh, in, a, in, a, in a route quicker, they're having to stop for a second and just chip block on one of these guys, okay? And what that's doing, that's taking one of your resources that could be out there catching a pass, and now they're having to slow their route down to chip block. Now, that's not unusual. Every team in the NFL does that uh, almost throughout every game. But the Chiefs are having to do it more often than they would like to in an effort to help out their two tackles. Now, the fourth thing that they're doing, and this goes right along with the chip blocking here, they're keeping Kelsey in tight more. Generally speaking, when the Kansas City offense uh, is humming at its optimum uh, premium way, generally speaking, they would like to have Kelsey split out wide in the slot. That's, that's where he works the best from. That's where he's got the most room to operate. And we talked about this before, that's, generally speaking, when he's lined up out in the slot, that's where he can aim for one linebacker, the, the inside hip of one linebacker, and then just cut right inside to this area right here, the middle of the field, that Kelsey World Square that we talked about in the offseason, and he can operate there. But instead of being split out in the slot so often this year, Kelsey is actually having to do a lot of motion, and you'll see him hunker down, usually behind Brown, as the, snap, as the snap comes, usually he's hunkered down behind Brown. And what that does is that confuses the defensive end right here. They don't know what Kelsey's going to do. They don't know if Kelsey's going to come back in here and try to stop the inside rush, if Kelsey's going to stop right here and stop the outside rush, or if Kelsey's just going to do more chip blocking on his way to a route. Now, usually Kelsey is just doing a little chip block on his way out to his route. But the point again is this, instead of Kelsey being split out here in the slot where he's got more room to operate and where the defense has to keep more of an eye on him, instead he's tucked back in here very tight. This, is, this isn't even really tight end, this is almost fullback slash tight end that Kelsey's playing in order to help out these two tackles. Now, that kind of gets lost in the shuffle of the game. There's so much happening in an NFL game. I, I mean, the, the amount of factors that go into every single play are astounding. But th this is there. When you watch it on film, you'll see you'll see Kelsey kind of tucked in behind the tackles, helping out those tackles in, 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 in pass blocking. And again, Kelsey eventually, he's so good, he can get out to his route. It's not necessarily limiting his numbers per se, but it is limiting how, how the, the, the amount of time it takes for him to get out there on that pass route, it is limiting how far downfield he can get. And that's allowing the defense to squeeze down a little bit because Kelsey's not challenging them in the middle as much. He's, he's coming out late on these pass routes, okay? So that's one of the things you're seeing Kelsey tight, really tight, not just tight end tight, but basically fullback tight on a lot of these plays. The fifth thing that you're seeing here, and again, this is creativity from the Chiefs Chiefs coaching staff, they're doing an excellent job. They really are. They, they, they're, they're just pulling out all the stops here. A lot of window dressing. And the players contributed here. This is something that Chris Collins for us talked about very well on Sunday night, that the players were contributing some of these plays like a Tom and Jerry play or the who's the quarterback play. And that's fun to watch. And it's important because it's just something else for the defense to think about, something to confuse the defense, something to steal a half second off the linebacker's reaction as they try to read what the offense is doing, just anything to distract the defense. And, and, and the Kansas City coaching staff is doing an excellent job of, of coming up with that window dressing 
and, and those weird, weird plays that are going on at times in the Kansas City offense. They've always done a good bit of that. Seems like they're doing more of that this year. And statistically, I don't know if that's true or not, but they're doing, doing it this year as well. Number six, and this is a big one. This is what we're going to come back to. Kansas City has been trying, at least, to run the football more. Now, that, that didn't necessarily show up in the first two or three games, but you could see it, I, I thought, against uh, the, the Eagles. You could definitely see it early in the game against Buffalo. Kansas City had to run the football more because they don't have as much time to throw it. So you need something just to kind of loosen up the defense and back them off. Now, up until Sunday night, Kansas City was actually doing a pretty good job running the football. In games three and four, which were, I think, the Chargers and the Eagles, I think, in those two games, Kansas City did a good, solid job of running the football. They were opening up running lanes. They were running the ball on the edges, but they could run the running back up between the tackles and the guards and the center as well. The offensive line was doing a good job. That didn't happen as much Sunday night, even though Kansas City was trying. Kansas City was trying to establish the run. Didn't work out very well on Sunday, on Sunday night, but that's one of the things that Kansas City is doing to try to keep some pressure off of Patrick Mahomes, to try to keep the defenses from just teeing off on Patrick Mahomes, especially when he can't take advantage of these seven-step drops. The other thing that they're doing, they're keeping in a two tight end set more often. You, you saw this more, I think, earlier in the season against the Browns, and, and I forget who they played in week two. I think you were seeing it more, but you're seeing this. Listen, when Blake Bell is in the game, he's not in there to catch a pass, ever. I think he's averaging eight or nine pass catches a season in his career. He's not in the game to catch the football. They might throw it to him one time just because they know the defense isn't going to be looking for it. But that's it. When Blake Bell, that second tight end, is in the game, he's in there to block. Now, that would be fine if Kansas City was just trying to go big and take advantage of a small defense. But that's not what's happening. When Kansas City brings in that second tight end, not Noah Gray. Noah Gray's in to catch the football. But when they bring in the other two guys, Blake Bell, and I can't remember the other tight end. If you want to post that in the comments, I appreciate it. This season, when they bring in Blake Bell, for a two tight end set, they're bringing him in to block, but not because they're trying to go big. They're just using some somebody here to help out the tackles because the tackles are struggling so much in pass coverage. The Chiefs are kind of being forced to slide in that second tight end every once in a while, more than they would like to. And, and again, that, that means you have basically four guys going out for passes instead of five. And Kansas City really would rather just have a clean enough pocket where they can flood flood the defense with uh, five receivers or four receivers and a running back, however you, you want to slice and dice it. They're not able to do that. They're having to put Blake Bell in more often to help block. And the last thing that I've picked up on, and again, these are just eight things that the Kansas, that I, I'm not smart enough to catch it all. They're doing more than I even realized. But the last thing that they're doing, they're getting rid of the ball very quickly on these quick hitches into the flat. What that is, Patrick Mahomes basically, <coughs> excuse me, it's not even really a five-step drop. Basically, he's just taking one step back off the line of scrimmage and throwing it directly and immediately right here to the wide receivers, uh, right here, right out there in the flats, and just a really quick hitch. And, and all that's really trying to do is just give the defense more to think about. Because Mahomes isn't able to drop back, even on some of the five-step drops, he's not comfortable, not getting a clean pocket. And that's just something else. And you say, well, every NFL team does that. And that's true. Every NFL team does that. But again, the Chiefs are doing it more often than they would like to. When you look at the Chiefs' offense over the past two or three seasons, especially the past two years, anytime they don't throw the ball downfield, it, it's almost like a wasted down, right? Because Kelsey and Hill and, and Watkins, to a degree, they, they can get up such huge chunks of yardage every time they catch the ball. They're almost impossible to defend. Kelsey and Hill are still just as impossible to defend. They don't have as much time to work their way downfield. And because you're only sending out four catching options versus five, they don't have, uh, they have a, a, a numbers disadvantage on defense. They have more defenders to cover the same number of receivers. So this is some of the stuff that's happening. Okay, now let's talk about 
the defense's reaction. I told you some of the smartest people in the NFL are defensive coordinators, and they catch on quick, all right? Even though the rules are totally against them in the NFL, uh, the NFL rules right now have favored the offenses for years and years and years and years. <laughs> Um, defensive coordinators figure out the weaknesses and they adjust and they adjust very quickly and that's going to happen more as the season goes along but here's what NFL defenses are already doing to the Chiefs number one they're being more aggressive against the run I told you the Chiefs are trying to run the ball more not that's not so much early in the season but we saw it some with Buffalo and this is just a natural reaction from Kansas City but NFL defenses have already and will continue to be more aggressive against the running game. They're not necessarily loading the box. If you just loaded the box with, say, eight or nine defenders against Mahomes, he's going to read that and just bomb the heck out of you downfield. Okay, so he's, he's too smart for that. But they are being more aggressive. Instead of waiting to see the play develop, you can already see the defensive linemen trying to jump the gaps, and you can already see the linebackers taking more aggressive steps forward to jump on that running game. You saw that Sunday night with Buffalo. They, they were much more aggressive with their, their front four and the linebackers jumping on that running game, jumping on the running game. And, and, and there were times where Kansas City ran the ball very well, and then there were other times, especially in the second half, where they had no chance. They got completely shut down with it. And, and that's something that NFL defenses are going to pick up on very quickly. They're going to jump on that running game, not necessarily loading the box with more defenders, can't do that against Mahomes, but being more quick and aggressive to jump on it. And, and that's why you're seeing the running game uh, struggle some on some night. The second thing you're seeing, and Chris Collinsworth talked about this at length on Sunday night. And I didn't agree with everything that Chris put out there on Sunday night, but he was right about this. Buffalo is being much more aggressive with uh, Kelsey and Hill. And it's not because it's not because Kansas City was being aggressive with, with their receivers. It's because Buffalo knew if they didn't know it before the game started, they figured it out quickly in the game. Buffalo knew that they didn't have to guard those receivers for as long. If you know that you've got to guard Kelsey and Hill for five, six, seven, even eight seconds, which there was an eight second play on a Sunday night. If you know that, you can't be as physical and aggressive with them because after that initial contact, that initial hit, uh, Kelsey and Hill both are so quick, they're going to get loose and they're probably going to get loose behind the defense, which is automatic touchdown. So defenses have been paranoid, scared to do that the past three seasons against Kansas City. Not this year. Buffalo was very aggressive. And by the way, Baltimore did some of the same things. And you can bet your bottom dollar that Washington is going to do some of the exact same stuff when they know that Mahomes is not going to be able to get that seven-step drop and not even get some of his five-step drops. They don't have to guard Kelsey and Hill for as long a period of time. They can be more physical and more aggressive with Kelsey and with Hill. And, and it just it creates fewer opportunities for the offense. Excuse me one second. <coughs> Sorry for the congestion. It just creates fewer opportunities there for the offense to work. And they're having to play against a tougher, tighter defense because the defense doesn't have to guard them for as long. The number three thing the defenses are doing, you saw this in the second half, okay? Basically, in quarters two and three, the Buffalo Bills, the defensive ends, were just teeing off, getting after Mahomes, getting after Mahomes, getting after Mahomes. And, and, and the numbers, the sack numbers, and the hurries may not suggest this, okay? Keep this in mind, those of you who are big on data, and I'm big on data, the Chiefs are doing so much stuff right here to help out the tackles, to help out the homes, to disguise what their struggle is, their weakness is. It's not necessarily showing up in the data when you look at sacks allowed and pressures allowed. It's not going to show up there. Where does it show up at? It shows up right here, okay? Lower completion percentage from Patrick Mahomes, and more interceptions and more plays where he is having to make quicker decisions by throwing on the run. That's where it shows up at. So with all due respect to our dear beloved Skip Bayless, who entertains us all endlessly with some rather far out remarks, such as Patrick Mahomes is regressing. Patrick Mahomes is not regressing. 
He is what he has always been. He's an absolute gunslinger, very smart, kind of in the Brett Favre mold, probably more so than the Tom Brady or the Peyton Manning mold. Excellent, excellent quarterback. Looks like a Hall of Famer to me by my standard of Hall of Fame. Excellent guy, but like any quarterback, if you can get in a space, if you can limit the amount of time, if you limit the amount of receivers he has to throw to, if you're physical with the four remaining receivers, the numbers are going to go down. And that's where it shows up at. Lower completion percentage and more interceptions and more plays that look like they could have been intercepted but just weren't by the defense. That's where it shows up at. Not in the sacks allowed, not in the pressures allowed, okay? So anticipating the flat, though, in the fourth quarter, you saw a prime example of this. In the fourth quarter, the defensive ends for Buffalo kind of stopped working so hard and aggressively to get at uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes. What they were really doing was starting to anticipate these hitches and, and the stuff that he was throwing out in the flat. And that's why I think it was, I think it was in the fourth quarter. You saw that interception by the defensive end who popped his hand up, just basically knocked the ball up in the air and then intercepted it. Now, he, that wasn't luck. He was anticipating that Mahomes was going to start throwing out to the flats again. Very much so. Just trying to get the ball in the hands of those playmakers as quickly as possible. And defensive ends are going to keep doing that to Kansas City as long as they're having these struggles and having to make those adjustments. Okay, That's going to continue. And they're going to try to get their hands in the passing lanes there on the hitches and the flat and take those away as well just like you saw in the Buffalo game in the fourth quarter on Sunday night. Now, I already mentioned this. This is something not necessarily that defenses are doing, but it comes from all of this. You have fewer options for Mahomes to throw to. You have less time for him to throw them. And you have a defense that is being more physical and more aggressive because they figured out all of this stuff. Okay, The Kansas City coaching staff on offense is doing a tremendous job. They, they, have, they have always been tremendous. They continue to be tremendous. But you can only do so much. There's only so much creativity you can pull out. And if, if Kansas City, and I've got three adjustments to make here on offense, you know, if I should dare to mention them to Andy Reid and Eric Benemy. But if Kansas City can't do something about this right here, if they can't do something there, then defenses are going to do more of this. And, and, and Kansas City might be able to work their way through. They've played a tough schedule so far. The schedule starts to soften up a little bit here in the middle of the season. They might be able to work their way through to a 10-6 and six record, but when you get back to those good teams in the playoffs, teams that you've already played in the Ravens, the Chargers, the Browns, the Bills, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to have the same problems if you don't find a way to fix them, all right? So, so I'm going to end up the video today with this right here. I think, and, and by the way, quick caveat, if Tooney goes down for one game or four games or however long, I don't know how long he's going to be out. It may not be any games. It might be one or two games. If Tooney goes down, that I, I don't know how much worse it gets for Kansas City other than just Patrick Mahomes himself being out, Okay. Because you've already got struggles here and here. You cannot afford to have a struggle there. You've got guys who can actually play decent left guard. You've got Allegretti. You, you've got Wiley. You've got guys who can play decent left guard. That's not the issue. The point is this. Tooney has been playing so well, not dominating, but he's been playing so well that he's been able to help out Brown and help, help out Humphrey. Now, if, if Wiley or, or uh, Allegretti or even Rimmers – slide in here at left guard, any of those three guys, they'll hold their own, but they're not going to be able to offer as much help to Brown and to Humphrey as Joe Tooney has been doing. And that's important. That's, that's one of those things that just kind of squeezes you down a little bit more. It's not so much that left guard itself is going to suffer, which it will a little bit. It's just that you don't have a guy who can help out as much because they've got their own hands full. Okay, so Tooney goes down. This gets worse very quickly, but let's assume for now that Tooney only misses one game or, or, or two games, or maybe, maybe that's kind of where it caps off at. We'll see. It may be worse than that, but let's assume for now that Tooney's playing most of the rest of the season. Mike Rimmers, I think it's time. I think it's time to put Mike Rimmers right in here at right tackle. But here's the reason, and some of you may disagree with that, and that's fine if you do post it in the comments and, 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 and you know be a part of the project here. Rimmers played better last year 
at right tackle by a country mile, by leaps and bounds better at right tackle last year than either Niang or Brown is playing this year. And it's not even close. You know, Rimmers couldn't play as good as Schwartz did last year at right tackle, but Rimmers stepped in. He did a good, solid, tough, competitive job. He held his own. They, they had to help him out some when it came to the elite edge rushers, but against anybody else, he held his own. He competed in the running game and in the passing game. It was not a sore spot for the Chiefs for the most part last year. It wasn't great. He wasn't dominating, but he was winning enough of those battles to where they weren't constantly having to do all of this stuff here and, and draw away resources from their passing game, okay? So I feel like, and this is just me, if you guys disagree, by all means, get jump in the comments and say, hey, Ben, you're an idiot, okay? Rimmers, I think, needs to come in here at right tackle. Now, what's that going to do for Lucas Niang's confidence? It's going to hurt it, okay? Uh, Niang's a young player. I'm not giving up on Niang in the long term. I still think there's a chance that Niang could be a good tackle in this league. But you, you, you really need to do what's best for the team here. And I think right now, what's best for the team, they're two and three. It's starting to get to be desperation time. It, it's, it, it's basically desperation time, right? Uh, not just because they're two and three, but because of how good the rest of the AFC looks right now. They need to get Rivers back in here at right tackle instead of Lucas Niang. And what that's going to do is... Instead of them having to help out right tackle so much, you could basically assume, if Rimmers is healthy, you could basically assume that he's going to more or less handle his business right here at right tackle. He's not going to dominate. You'll still have to help him against the elite edge rushers from time to time, but at least you're competitive at this spot right here. Right now, you're not competitive, not, not in pass blocking. You're not competitive at all right here. You're just not even close. Rimmers is competitive. He competed last season. He competed it hard. He handled his business. He can handle it this year if he's healthy. It will be an upgrade at right tackle. Long term, what will that do for Niang? I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to worry about that in the offseason and move ahead in the next year. But for now, Rimmers needs to be the guy here at right tackle. I suggested that in the offseason. The front office and coaching staff, I think, had a lot of confidence in Niang. So far, it hasn't happened. But what that does is, this is important. If Rimmers is here and handling his business at least to the level that he did last year, right, in 2020, if he's handling his business, then that's a spot you don't necessarily have to worry about. And instead of having two sore spots on the offensive line, you've just got one. And you can continue to have Mahomes roll away from that spot if you want to. Or if you want, at times, you can have Kelsey chipping and you have the running back chipping. But instead of having one, uh, instead of having two devastating sore spots, you only have one. And that starts to open up the door. And again, it can be the little things that start to tilt your season. And if, if Rimmers can step in here and hold this right tackle spot, which I believe he can, if he can do that, it will start to tilt things back in Kansas City's favor. It starts to open the offense back up a little bit. Instead of having to keep so many resources in here blocking, you start to send them back out again. Instead of having to get rid of the ball quite so quickly on three and five step drops, you can start to mix back into the five and the seven step drops. It's a domino effect. It's an important domino effect. It's not great for Niang, but I think it's the right thing for the team. Could you do anything with Brown? There's nobody else to step in and play left tackle. Okay, there just isn't. Rimmers would be the guy, if anybody, but I think the thing to do is, since you traded for him, leave Orlando Brown right there, take Niang out, plug in, uh, plug in Mike Rimmers right there at right tackle. The second thing that I would do right here at least until something changes in the tackle, I would start to do more play action. And Kansas City's got to do that. I mentioned earlier, the defenses are going to be more aggressive against the run. They're going to jump on those, those running lanes. No matter how good of a job the offensive line is doing blocking, you can't block, you can't block too many numbers. So if the defenses are starting to jump on those running lanes, that's going to open up the middle of the field. Again, that's something that Chris Collinsworth mentioned on uh, a Sunday night. And again, I didn't agree with everything he was putting out there, but he was right on this. If, if Mahomes it can, can switch gears just a little bit and start to look at, at the middle of the field, at some of this underneath stuff, some of the shorter stuff right here, both of those things, if they can do play action and do some of the shorter stuff, some of that stuff is open. It's not the ideal offense, okay? It's not the pure optimum uh, fuel on which the Kansas City offense likes to run but you got to make some adjustments here 
or defenses are just going to start to eat you up. And this is one of the things that you can do. Maybe even if you move rimmers here, maybe even put Noah Gray in as a second tight end to catch some passes, take advantage of some size mismatches. That will kind of start to open up the offense. Josh Gordon being there will not hurt. I think that's another excellent move. I don't think you're going to see a big difference um, with the offense until the tackle spots get fixed. But bringing in Josh Gordon is another excellent move. We saw the Patriots do this for years and years and years. Somewhere in early in the season, middle of the season, bring in some veteran. Uh, and he plays a pivotal role in making their runs to the playoffs. Kansas City has done this now for, I think, three or four years in a row, bringing in some veteran on a very low, low money contract and letting them play. A uh, pretty pivotal role. We, we saw that in their Super Bowl year with Wisniewski at, uh, at, at offensive line, and, and I forget the, uh, the linebacker who came in. Uh, just excellent job then. They've continued to do this, so bringing in Josh Gordon will help, but it's not going to make a huge difference until you get one of these tackle spots figured out for me, preferably right tackle. Okay, that's a lot. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. I've got the defense coming up. I've got, I think, the money, money show coming up as well. See you next time. Bye.